In this video, we're going to introduce chemical kinetics. Now, the field of chemical kinetics, this is just really a fancy term to describe an area of chemistry that's interested in reaction rates, right? So how fast or how slow is a reaction occurring? So everything we've studied up to this point, all the different thermodynamic variables that we've discussed, enthalpy, entropy, uh, free energy, right? These all des uh, describe energy changes that occur as a result of a reaction, but they don't really address the question of, of how fast a reaction is going to occur or how slow it's going to occur. That's the domain of chemical kinetics. So a very uh, handy uh, visual representation of a chemical reaction is what's known as a reaction coordinate. So what I've shown here is a reaction coordinate for a reaction where you have some reactant A that's becoming some product B. The reaction coordinate for the y-axis usually has some sort of energy. Here I have the free energy. It could also be the enthalpy or the potential energy or the total energy of the system. The, the plot will more or less look very similar. Um, and the x-axis is what we call reaction coordinate or sometimes you'll see reaction progress, right? This is just the progress from the reactant to the products, right? So basically what happens with the reaction coordinate diagram is that you start with your reactant, right? And then the energy is going to increase as the reaction proceeds, right? Because it's, the reaction is proceeding and is going to form the products, but it has to overcome what's known as an activation energy barrier, right? So this is called the activation energy barrier. Right. It has to overcome that energy barrier, that increase in energy before it can uh, go downhill and, and reach the products. Right. So really, if we're going to think about where chemical kinetics and thermodynamics kind of are, are complementary to each other, this diagram is a really good way to see that. Right. So if I draw a dotted line here. And here. Right. What you'll notice is that at A and B, this energy is very stable, right? For the reactants and the products, right? Whenever we were calculating thermodynamic differences, right? Really just looking at the energy of these two states, right? So if I want to calculate Delta G, right? Delta G would just be the difference between these two energies, right? So the difference in Delta, so the Delta G for the reaction would just be this gap. Right. So all I would need to know is the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products. And I can calculate a delta G. So thermodynamics is really interested in these two regions here. Right. So these two regions is kind of the realm of thermodynamics. Right. Really, all you need are, are the stable energies of the reactant and product states in order to describe the system. Kinetics, chemical kinetics is concerned with everything that happens in between, right? Everything that happens between the reactants and products is the realm of chemical kinetics. And we'll look more at these diagrams later and talk about them in more detail. But basically, the height of this activation energy barrier determines how fast the reaction is going to happen. If this barrier is lower, then it'll happen a little bit quicker. If this barrier is higher, then that reaction will happen a lot slower, right? But kinetics is going to be determined or, or um, is going to be described by what's going on in this middle region of the reaction coordinate diagram, right? So, okay, so let's talk about how we can actually look at a, a chemical reaction and describe its rate, right? If chemical kinetics is concerned with reaction rates, we're going to have to have a, a rock solid way to be able to define them. Right. So uh, let's look at an example. So this example that I'm looking at is the uh, decomposition of NO2, right, of nitrogen dioxide. So it's decomposition into nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas. Right. So I've already balanced out this equation for you. And we've got some data. And the data that we have is the concentration of our reactants and products over time. Right. So you're looking at how the concentration of the reactant is going down, down, down. And the reaction of the product, the concentration of the products is going up and up. Right. So that automatically gives us two separate ways that we can view chemical reactions, right? Or that we can view the rate of these reactions, right? So if we want to look at the reaction rate, we can think of it as the rate of disappearance of our reactant, right? Because our reactant is being consumed in this process, 
or we can think of it as the rate of production of the products, right? As their concentrations going up, they're being produced as this process goes along, right? So we can think about these as rates of change of the concentration over time, right? So think about the rate of change of the concentration of nitrogen monoxide over time, right? DT, right? So this, uh, this DT is just a change in time and this numerator, the D concentration of NO is just a change in the concentration. This is just a rate of change, right? How is the concentration changing with respect to time? We could also think about this as the rate of, um, of formation of O2, right? What's the change in concentration of O2 over time? Or we can think about this as the rate of disappearance of NO2, right, over time. And since, um, since NO2 is actually disappearing, I'll put a negative sign in front of this rate of change because we know that this number is going down, right? So that gives us two different ways that we can envision these, uh, these reaction rates, right? We can think about it through the lens of the products, right? The rate of formation of the products, right? So at what rate is, are the products being formed in this reaction? Or we can think about it as the rate of disappearance of our reactants. So rate of formation of the products or rate of disappearance of the reactant. Right. So that gives us these two lens to view the reaction rate from. And if the reaction is occurring at a steady pace, then that should be the exact same thing. These should be equivalent um, as the reactant is um, decomposed, as, as the um, reactant disappears, then the product should be formed at that same rate governed by the stoichiometry. And we'll get into that in a second when we look at the actual data. But this gives us these two frames to look at the reaction from. OK, so let's actually look at the data. And what I want to do is just focus in on this time frame and let's try to detail the rate of the reaction. Right. And look at how it's governed by our chemical equation. Right. So I'm focusing in on this time frame from zero to 50 seconds. Right. And if we look at the change in the concentration of NO2. Right. So the change in the concentration of NO2 throughout that 50 second period is that we lose about 0.0021. Moles per liter. Right. And I should put a negative sign here, right? Because this goes down, right? So zero, zero, two, one moles per liter. Right. Again, moles per liter, the molarity for the concentration is something we talked about in a previous course, right? This gives you the concentration of NO2 that's lost throughout that 50 second period, right? And then when we look at the concentration of NO that is produced in that uh, 50 second period, we get the exact same number, right? Except this is being gained by NO2, right? The concentration of NO, the concentration of NO is increasing by the same amount that the concentration of NO2 is decreasing. And for O2, uh, we gain about half of that, right? So it's gaining about half of the concentration, roughly. Okay, so we have some interesting things to look at here. NO2, its concentration is dropping at the exact same rate as the concentration of NO2 is, as of NO is being produced, right? That's the exact same rate. And the concentration of O2 is increasing at about half the rate. And so does that make sense to us? Well, let's look at the stoichiometry and see if we can make sense of it here, right? If we look back at our chemical equation, NO2 and NO have a one-to-one -one mole ratio, right? For every two moles of NO2 that is uh, decomposed, we produce two moles of NO, right? That's a one-to-one -one mole ratio versus O2 is going to be half, right? For every two moles of NO2 that's, that disappears, you 
form one mole of O2. So these rates actually match up with the stoichiometry. So this tells us that we have to take into account the stoichiometry when we're writing these rates, right? We're writing out these rates. We have to take into account the stoichiometry in order to get this correct, right? They're not going to actually be equal rates unless we factor in the stoichiometry. Right. So let me uh, let me write this on the next slide since I ran out of space here. But if, if, in order to take in into account that stoichiometry, right, what we do is basically divide by the stoichiometric coefficient in front of that species. Right. So for this reaction, we would have one half the rate of constant uh, of disappearance or rate of formation of NO right over time. Right. That would be one way to describe the rate. Right. One half the rate of disappearance of NO. Right. Since there was no stoichiometric coefficient in front of O2, we don't really have to put one there. So DT. And if we're going to use the rate of disappearance of NO2, we have to put a negative sign and we have to have our stoichiometric coefficient in front times the rate. Right, and I'll just rewrite the equation here just so we can see it, right? So it was 2NO2 produces 2NO plus O2, right? So these rates come from the stoichiometry in the chemical equation, right? So this one half is here because there's a two in front of NO. This, uh, this O2 doesn't have any number in front of it because it doesn't have a stoichiometric coefficient in front of it. Right. Same thing here. This one half comes from the two in front of o NO2. Right. So whether you're looking at this through the lens of the uh, the rate of disappearance of the reactants or the rate of formation of the products, you have to consider the stoichiometry. Right. So we see that here formally with these rate expressions. We also saw this in the data when we looked at the data for the concentration of NO2, uh, this de decomposition over time. OK, so hopefully this gives you a good overview of what chemical kinetics is. Um, the rest of this unit and the next unit is going to be diving into this field uh, head first. So uh, the next video, what we're really going to focus on is looking at how the uh, concentration affects the overall rate of the reaction. How do we formalize those expressions?